Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today what I want to do is look at free fall problems. I'm going to look at three types of problems. Uh, the first problem, you could be standing on top of a building and we're simply going to drop an object. I want to analyze its position and its velocity as a function of time. Uh, second problem, make it a little bit harder. What I want to do is instead of dropping it, I may throw the object up in the air. It's going to go up to some maximum height, turn around, come back down. Again, I want to analyze the motion of the object at any time. And the last one is another variation, except instead of throwing it up, what happens if I throw it down, right? If I'm at the top of a building and I throw an object down, it should take a lot less time to reach the bottom, right? Anyway, let's go ahead and analyze these three cases. What we're going to do is look at the kinematic equations and how do we apply them to solve free fall problems. Again, with all my videos, please, the best way to support what I do is to subscribe to my channel and like the video. All right, remember, leave all your comments and questions down below. I'll do the best I can to get back to you as quickly as possible. All right, let's get started. All right, first, I want to do a quick refresher on our kinematic equations. I'm going to write down three equations, and these equations I can write as long as two conditions are met. Uh, first of all, the, we're looking at 1D motion, and for free fall, we will be looking at 1D motion, either up or down. And we also require that the acceleration is uniform or is a constant value. All right, and whenever you have both of these conditions, I can write simple equations to analyze the motion. So I typically use three equations to solve most of these problems. Uh, the first one here says that the final velocity equals to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. Uh, the second one is my displacement is the initial velocity times time uh, plus one half the acceleration and multiplied by time squared. And our last one here is V final squared equals to V initial squared plus two times the displacement delta Y multiplied by the acceleration. Now, if I want to write these equations specifically for the free fall problem, I only have to do two things, okay? First of all, I simply have to exchange the acceleration here has a constant value for free fall. And the value, we typically write it like this. It's equal to minus little g, and little g is defined as the acceleration due to gravity, and its value is well known. It's 9.8 meters per second squared when you're close to the surface of the Earth. So that's it. Okay, so we're going to substitute little g into our three equations here and apply these equations to solve all our free fall problems. So let me go ahead and just kind of make an arrow here, and we'll adapt these three equations uh, for free fall. So the first one here will simply become v final equals to v initial minus little g times t. Now you may ask, why is there a negative sign there? And that's a really, really good question. When I've written this, remember acceleration is a vector quantity. And in order to denote uh, the direction for 1D problems, you have to pick a direction. And by writing minus 9.8 or minus little g, I'm assuming that the down direction is a negative direction. All right, we'll see more of that when we looked at problems. Uh, what else? Uh, our second equation then would simply become that the displacement in the vertical direction is our initial velocity times time minus one half little gt squared. And then the final one would become a v final squared equals v initial squared minus two times the displacement times little g. All right, these are our three equations that we're going to use for all the free fall problems. Our acceleration is constant and it's pointing down everywhere and it is also has the value of 9.8 meters per second squared. Let's go now and look at some problems. All right, here's our first case. We're gonna drop the ball. We're gonna drop the ball from a height H. In this case here, I'm gonna set the height equals to seven meters, okay? Kind of a tall building. If I drop a ball, a very important characteristic of that is that my initial velocity has to be zero meters per second, okay? Uh, what else? I've defined the up direction to be positive. So if I was going to go everywhere and plot the direction of the acceleration, for example, what is the acceleration as soon as I drop it? I would have to do something like this. The acceleration here would be down, and the value would be little g, and little g is 9.8. Now, what if I drew it right here? The acceleration would also be down, and the value would still be little g, 9.8. And our last, let me do it right before it hits the ground. The acceleration would still be 9.8 pointing down. What about the velocity? Well, the velocity here is zero. What happens actually when it's kind of partially down here? Again, the velocity vector points down, right? This would be the velocity over here. And right before it hits the ground, it's also pointing down, but I should make that vector a little bit bigger because it's speeding up, 
All right, so the velocity starts zero, gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, so let's look at a couple uh, standard questions for a type of problem like this. Uh, how long uh, before it hits the ground, right? How much time does it take basically to fall seven meters? How would you solve that problem? All right, so let's go ahead and uh, do this. So first of all, these are the three kinematic equations. And let's look at which one I might use. Why would I not use equation one for how long it hits the ground? First of all, it has to have time in it, right? Uh, but why not use equation one? Because I don't know what the final velocity is right here. If I knew this, then I could use equation one. So equation two has time and equation three doesn't have time. So I'm probably guessing that equation two is probably the best choice over here. Initial velocity times time minus one half, a little gt squared. Now, some simplifications happen over here. First of all, this first term has to go to zero because the initial velocity we said was zero whenever you drop something. So that becomes straightforward. Uh, the next thing is, what is the displacement for this problem? Okay, remember a displacement is always a final position minus an initial position. This is actually how you write any delta value. It's always a final value minus an initial value. And this here has to be equal to minus one half little gt squared. All right, so for this, we're going to use our displacement. Well, we know it's seven meters, but should I use positive seven or should I use negative seven? Okay, well, this kind of depends. Typically, what we do is we set the zero somewhere. We're going to say maybe that the ground is position zero, and up here, we're actually at position seven meters above that point, and it's positive seven, right? So if I substitute our values over here, my final value would be zero. Uh, my initial value would be minus, well, minus the initial value, which is minus seven, and that here has to be equal to minus one half, little g is 9.8, and t squared. You see that this side is the displacement, and this side is negative, and that's okay, because my displacement vector for this problem is actually down. It's pointing down, and the magnitude is seven meters. All right, our last thing, all we have to do now is do a little bit of algebra. So the negative signs cancel out. And we put the 2 at the top. We divide by 9.8. And we get t squared equals 2 times 7 over 9.8. And at the end, you could take the square root of each side. And then you're going to be left with time. Okay. Uh, if I do time, uh, substitute in all our numbers, I should get approximately 1.2 seconds. Okay. For the ball to drop a distance of 7 meters. All right, problem two says, how fast is it moving right here at this position right before it hits the ground? Well, now it's probably best to use equation one. Let's try that one. Right? V final, that's what I'm trying to solve for, equals to the initial velocity minus little g multiplied by time. Well, think about this problem, right? That initial velocity is zero. Um, I know little g is 9.8. And which time would I use? Well, in this case here, I would use the time that I just solved for because this is how much time it takes before the ball gets to this final position. So all you have to do now is simply substitute those numbers. All right, so you're going to get minus 9.8 multiplied by 1.2. And at the end, if you do that carefully, um, and I think I did, I should get negative 11.7 uh, meters per second. Okay, that is the final speed. All right, remember this negative sign here is just an indication that the final velocity as a vector is pointing down, so we'd expect something to be negative. All right, and what if we didn't know this and we wanted to use equation three instead? How would we apply equation three to this problem? Well, it would look something like this, right? Let's just write it down, uh, 2g times delta y. Again, we have that simplification that the initial velocity is zero. Forget about that term. And here now we're just substituting the numbers, right? So you get minus 2, little g, the magnitude is 9.8, and the displacement over here should be minus 7. Again, negative because the ball's dropping, and that's the negative direction for this problem. Now this is vf squared. So notice these two negatives are going to cancel out, so let's not worry about that. And now if we take our time here, we take that the final velocity. If you take the square root of something, Guess what? You get two answers, plus or minus 2 times 9.8 multiplied by 7. And guess what this equals to? Plus or minus 11.7 meters per second. At the end, if we're looking at an object that is dropping, and I've defined down to be uh, the negative direction, 
And at the end, I have to just keep the negative solution. I have to look at what's going on and my velocity should be negative 11.7 meters per second. All right, this next case is really, really important. What happens when you throw a ball up? All right, again, we're going to assume here that my height was seven meters, same as before. All right, that's the initial height. And I'm gonna assume that I'm gonna throw this ball up here at a speed of six meters per second. It's going up initially, okay? Um, anyway, so it's gonna go up to some maximum height here, turn around, and then come back down, right? There is something really, really, really important about this position here, right? And this is our top position. And it's that the vertical velocity at the top equals to zero. It instantaneously comes to rest. All right, so this here is really, really important for these problems. So again, if you were going to plot acceleration anywhere over here on this trajectory, you would have to write it down as minus 9.8 meters per second or 9.8 pointing down. And down I've defined as the negative direction again. So again, let's just write down our coordinate system here. So everything going up is defined as the positive direction. Okay, uh, these are the four questions I want to look at for this problem. How long does it take to get to the top? Let's start with that one. Okay, so again, to use that one, I have to use this fact that at the top, the vertical component of the velocity is zero. Which of these equations has time, either the first one or the second one? Okay, now I'm looking for how long. I don't know what that height is, so I really don't know the displacement to get to the top. So using equation two is problematic, but problem one, uh, sorry, equation one should do the job for me. Let's just first write it down. So it has time, and that's basically what I'm trying to solve for. And now I'm going to use the fact that at the top, I know the velocity. They don't tell me it's zero, but I know it's zero. All right, equals, what is the initial velocity? For this one, this is plus six for this problem. Positive because the initial velocity is pointing up, and it's, that's the positive direction. Minus 9.8, that's our acceleration, multiplied by time. So rearrange this equation right here. What you're going to get here is 6 over 9.8. The negative signs will cancel out when you solve that. And I should get 0 0.612 seconds. So at 6.612 seconds, I'm right here at the top of the trajectory. That's it for that one. Pretty straightforward. The next problem says find what this maximum height is. All right, well, for that, if I can figure out how high I traveled here in this 0.612 seconds, I should be able to find what the maximum height is. It just depends. Do you want to do it relative to the ground or relative to the top here? But we could find what the displacement is here, just this part from the initial position to the top. For that here, I probably want to use either equation 2 or equation 3. They're both going to do the right job. Uh, for equation 2, it's simply VIT minus 1 half little g multiplied by t squared. Okay, let's keep going here. My initial velocity we said was 6. The time now is 0 0.612. That's when I'm at the top. Minus 1 half, 9.8. And again, 0 0.612. And don't forget to square that last one. All right, so my displacement now that I get uh, for this specific, specific problem is 1.84 meters. Okay, so that is the displacement. Now they're asking me for the maximum height. So this is where you got to be a little bit careful. Okay, so this 1.84 is really this distance right here, right? This is the distance here. This is my displacement delta y equals to 1.84. Okay, so the maximum height, um, again, if I'm going to measure it, say, from the ground, uh, then the maximum height should be uh, 7.84. Okay, so the max height. Just write down again from the ground. Okay, should be uh, the 7 meter, oh, sorry, 7 meters plus 1.84, which is 8.84 meters. Okay, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, the next one is let's find the speed now right before hitting the ground. So right before hitting the ground is this position right here, right? And it's moving pretty fast. It's moving downward. And I'm looking for this value over here. So this is for problem three. All right, so which equation should I use? Well, I can either use uh, equation one, or I can use maybe equation three also has the speed. All right, maybe let's do that one right there. That one's pretty straightforward. How would I use equation three to find the speed for this problem? Well, again, let's just start by writing down our equation, right? Uh, the equation here is v final squared equals v initial squared 
minus 2g and delta y, my displacement. All right, so how do I apply the equation to this problem right here? Um, well, one thing I could do is, again, just substituting in our values. And again, I want to take the square root on each side in order to really get the expression for v final. And whenever I'm, I do the square root, I have two solutions, plus or minus. Like we indicated before, we probably only want to keep the negative solution because we know the object is moving down. So the initial velocity is 6 squared, and then minus 2 multiplied by 9.8. And now we have to be a little bit careful. What is the displacement delta y? Well, this is the displacement delta y. I start right here, and I finish right here. Guess what that displacement is right here? Right? This is the delta y that I'm looking for for the entire motion. So in this case here, I should really have negative seven meters as my total displacement. The negative is telling me that it's going down and the magnitude is seven, okay? Uh, if you substitute all the numbers in there, you should get a final speed of uh, 13.16 meters per second. Don't forget the negative sign, turn that into a vector to indicate that it is going down. All right, pretty straightforward problem. All right, for the second part, we want to find, uh, the last part rather, we want to find the total flight time. There are many, many ways to do this problem here, so I've given myself a little bit more space here, but let's think about maybe using equation two here to find the total flight time. Um, so let me just write four. Let's write down this equation and think about how we would apply this equation to find the flight time. And I'll solve it. This is probably the hardest way to solve it. Uh, we found how much time it takes to go to the top, right? You could just look at going from the top back down and then add both of those times, that's actually much easier to do, but let's just do it this way, just to practice using this equation. So first of all, we started over here and we wanna end up down here. So we know our displacement here is minus seven. That we know. Negative sign because it's going down. We know the initial velocity is six and it's positive six. We don't know time. Time will be the total time from going from here all the way to the bottom. Minus one half, a little g we know is 9.8, and multiplied by t squared. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put all the terms on one side of the equation, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's bring the seven on the other side, so we're gonna zero on the left-hand side, and here we're gonna be left with seven, all right, uh, plus six t, and then minus 9.8 over two is 4.9 t squared. Uh, what we have over here, folks, is a quadratic equation, okay? And in order to solve the quadratic equation, you can use the solution for the quadratic equation, which says that t is going to be equal to, um, remember, it's minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So think about how you would apply it to this problem, or you can use your calculator, right? Some uh, scientific calculators can just give you the answer right away. But let me go ahead and just substitute the numbers in here. So you get minus 6 for this one. What else? Plus or minus uh, square root. Uh, B squared would be 6 squared minus 4. Uh, the A term is minus 4.9, and the C term is positive 7. So you see these two negative signs are going to cancel out. And then at the end, you're left with 2A. So this is 2 multiplied by minus 4.9, right? I haven't done anything, um, right? Anything, everything I've done here is hopefully pretty straightforward. You just got to be careful not to make mistakes. All right, if you evaluate this term here in the square root, that's what I'll do first. I'll break it down, plus or minus. I think I got like 13.16 for this. Then all of this divided by, this becomes 2 times negative 4.9 gives me this. Now, you have to think about this. There's two solutions here. If I use the positive sign, right? Imagine I first look at the positive sign. Actually, what happens here is you're going to end up getting a positive number in the top divided by a negative number. But in this case, time is going to be negative. All right, and we ha can't have that. Okay, so we're not going to use that sign. So instead here, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use the negative sign. And you see that all of those negative signs are eventually going to cancel out. So if you do that negative sign, what you end up getting is that the time, uh, the positive time, ends up being 1.96 seconds. Okay, and this is really the total flight time 
in order for my displacement to be negative seven meters, right? So it's the time to go up and then come back down and end up right here. All right, not an easy problem to solve, but uh, pretty straightforward. You just have to be careful with the algebra and getting to the final answer. All right, the last case I want to look at is what happens when you throw a ball down. Here's the problem. Height is seven. My initial, I'm going to throw it down at eight meters per second. But remember, it's going down, right? Um, and again, once it's going to speed up again, once it, right before it hits the ground, it's probably moving faster than eight meters per second. Uh, first question, how much time does it take to drop seven meters if I gave it this initial throw of eight meters per second down? So uh, which question or which equation should I use to try to find the time? Again, you can't use the first one because you don't know what the final speed is. You can use the second one though, right? So if I use uh, equation two here, it's my displacement is initial velocity times time minus one half gt squared. All right, we should start getting good at substituting numbers in here. My displacement, since it's going down, I should put negative 7 over here. Now, my initial velocity, what should I do with that? Should I just put 8? So this is where you have to be careful. It's 8, but it's also pointing down. And down is the negative direction because the coordinate system that we typically use for this is positive is pointing up, negative is pointing down. All right, times t, what else? Minus one half, uh, little g, 9.8, and t squared. This is kind of similar to the previous one, except there's some different signs in here. Let me bring the seven over, and minus eight t, again, 9.8 over two uh, ends up being 4.9 t squared. Here's my quadratic equation again, which I know the solution. t is equal to, there's two solutions. One of them is positive, one of them is negative. You just take the positive solution. So again, it's minus b. Minus b gives me uh, 8 plus or minus the square root of b squared. This is going to be 8 squared minus 4 multiplied by a, negative 4.9, multiplied by c, uh, which is 7, divided by 2a. And this will be 2 multiplied by negative 4.9. All right, uh, if I did that square root term correctly here, what I should get is 8 plus or minus, oops, if I evaluated this whole term, what I should get I think is like 14.18, uh, all of this over negative 9.8. All right, if you think about which sign should you use now, right? If I use the top sign, the positive sign, what's going to happen? Well, I'm going to have a positive number in the numerator and a negative number. That's not going to work. All right, so let's forget about that positive sign. So what you really should use is the negative sign here. All right, and if you do that, I think that the time you should get at the end is 0 0.63 seconds. All right, that's how much time it takes to drop 7 meters if I throw something down. All right, what about now? What's the second question? Find the velocity just before hitting the ground. Again, there's two approaches I can use to this one. All right, I could use the first equation, V final equals to v initial minus little g times t. In this case, I'm looking for v final. So what's my v initial? Negative 8 minus 9.8 multiplied by 0 0.63 seconds. All right, uh, if you did that carefully, uh, what you should get is approximately 14.2 uh, meters per second as my final velocity. I could have also used equation 3, right? What if I used equation 3 instead? All right, if you use the equation 3, that also has the final velocity. Again, if you take the square root on each side, you're ending up just substituting numbers here. We'll have to take the negative solution as we indicated before. Um, little g multiplied by delta y. Okay, um, so let's just go right away and cancel out that positive solution. And what I'm left with here is my final velocity equals 2. Uh, this will be 8 squared minus 2 times 9.8. Now my displacement again is going to be negative 7 meters. Uh, substituting the numbers in there, again, there may be a little bit of rounding error here, but should give me approximately 14.2. Uh, if you take care of all the rounding, these answers should be exactly identical to each other. Okay. All right, folks, that's it for my free fall uh, video tutorial. Hopefully you found these problems useful. Uh, thanks for watching.